On Monday, the Judiciary Committee of the House of Representatives served a subpoena on Fox News analyst Carl Rove, the former White House advisor, a legal command for Rove to appear and testify about the Bush Justice Department, how it was politicized, how it went after a Democratic governor and even Republican prosecutors who refused to play ball. Now in our third story in the countdown, Rove has announced he will defy the law. I mean, he'll defy the law again. And he did so, of course, in a venue that two weeks ago demanded unquestioning compliance with the U.S. government. Rove explaining last night that not President Bush still outranks now President Obama, apparently because uh, Bush came first. I've been directed on again on June, January 16th by the outgoing president's legal counsel not to respond to a subpoena, uh, uh, and the, the exerting privilege on behalf of the former president. So you're not even going to show uh, up? It's close aides. No. If you need a place to hide out, we have it here at the factor. We have all I, kinds I, of tunnels and places we can put you. I don't need to hide. Okay. I don't need to hide. Of course, there is no tunnel. It's technically the female producer's escape hatch. Rove actually forwarded the subpoena to the Obama White House asking, so guys, what's the current executive branch position on those privilege claims that Mr. Bush asserted last year when he declined to enforce the Rove subpoena issued by the previous Congress? We're now joined by Congressman Jerry Nadler, who sits on that Judiciary Committee. Congressman, thanks for your time tonight. It's a pleasure. You gave Mr. Rove a deadline of the 2nd of February to respond. He has now responded. What does your committee do about it now? Well, if he refuses to show up, we're going to have to vote a, a contempt citation. Uh, when we vote the contempt citation, we'll have to bring it to the whole House. The House presumably will, will vote the same contempt citation. The law then says that uh, a contempt citation voted by the House or the Senate, for that matter, is given to the U.S. Attorney, quote, this is the law, whose duty it shall be, unquote, to deliver it to the grand jury. In other words, he must prosecute and enforce the subpoena. Now, President Bush, uh, as in so many other things, simply ignored the law and instructed the U.S. attorney not to obey the law and not to enforce the subpoena. I imagine President Obama will not do the same, will not do the same thing. Do you, ha do you have any communication from the current White House about that? No, it's premature. Okay. Uh, do you, do you, the mechanisms of all this are what? The FBI uh, had him, you know, or would have him brought into the chamber no, 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 uh, no, no. To no, sit no, at the that, witness that, table, no, no, or no, what no. do they pot? That's what a happens? different kind of contempt. The normal, that, that's inherent mm -hmm. contempt. The normal contempt is you simply uh, uh, arrest him. Uh, the grand jury in, indicts him. You arrest him for contempt, and you put him in jail until he is uh, prepared to testify to obey the subpoena. Is there any precedent, to your knowledge, uh, for what he's claiming, that, that a no longer sitting precedent, uh, president rather uh, leaves a kind of vestigial privilege uh, to people who well, uh, may not have even been authorized to have that privilege when the president was still in office? I, I, I think that th there's a certain privilege that does attach even to an ex-president, but there's no privilege mm -hmm. here. There, even if some communications, there's a, there's a executive privilege is a privilege to protect certain communications with the president so that the president can get honest advice. That's all it is. It's a common law privilege. Um, there is certainly no privilege to say that anyone around the president, including the president, uh, certainly after he's president, cannot simply refuse to show up. I mean, uh, a proper exercise of the privilege would be to come to the uh, committee and to object to a specific question and say, I can't answer that question on the grounds uh, that it's privileged. And then you could litigate whether, in fact, that was a proper exercise of privilege or not. But simply to hold the committee and the Congress in contempt by saying you failed to show up, there is no basis for that in American history except for Harriet Myers and, and Mr. Bolton uh, in the last year of the Bush administration, who were just as contemptuous and are, are, are under uh, are contempt citations now. So presumably barring some totally unexpected action by the Obama administration, this ends up with Rove appearing before your committee or sitting in jail until he does so. If he does finally show up well, he would, and he, denies he would, he would doing anything... Well, he would have to go into court. He, it would end up with him going mm -hmm. into court and then presumably being sentenced to jail uh, until he agrees to appear before the committee. But if he does, if and when he does appear, and if he denies doing anything illegal and does not provably commit perjury, what happens then? What's the absolute end game here? Well, the, he has to answer all legitimate questions. He has to answer all mm. relevant questions unless he can assert a privilege. Now, you can assert a privilege against self-incrimination based on the Fifth Amendment. You can assert executive privilege if you can show that answering that question would, de would destroy the, 
the, pri the, the right of the president to get uh, 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 frank advice on something. But, I mean, most of these things, there is no claim. In fact, there's denial that the president knew anything about it, which means by definition there is no executive privilege. So he would have <laughs> to answer those questions. If he didn't, he would be put in jail. He'd be ah, cited again for contempt and put in jail. It. Yep. Again, it's lovely exactly symmetry to it in some respects. Yeah, it's it's yeah. exactly the same as we all remember when when people went before the House Un-American Activities Committee or the McCarthy Committee, they refused to answer questions. The courts held in some cases that they didn't have the right to do that, and they were put in jail. Now, those committees were terrible and were abusing their rights, but uh, there is there's clearly no, no no ability simply to hold your the thumb you nose at Congress and say I'm not going to show up. Right. At least you have to cross that first threshold of coming through the door. And Congressman Gerald Nadler of New York, a, a great thanks for walking us through this. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure.